through on a Sphinx's Revelation player. You just give them time to drop that land so that they can actually go Sphinx's Revelations for, say, three for their first one, or even four for their first one, instead of doing it for two. And that means they're all the more likely to draw to their second Sphinx's Revelation, which in this case is going to be for probably six instead of for four. You know, It just cascades into this, I guess you could say, um, element of utter control pain where you're the sad aggro player in that matchup you're the person trying to be the beat down and your opponent sits at a healthy cushion of life with a full hand full of cards and you're down to your last card in hand hoping that you can make something happen yeah in this matchup i think it really is all about those sphinx's revelations and things that can keep him alive and uh, Jack Fogel knows exactly what he wants to do. He has four Sphinx's Revelations, he has six Sweepers, he has a lot of removal, and he has ways to get there. So I think his deck's well, very well positioned in this matchup. Um, but, you know, similar to uh, what we saw in the other semifinals match, Eric does have some resilient threats. He has uh, Restoration Angels that can come down at the end of turn. He's got some Hasted Thundermaw Hellkites. Uh, Thrag Tusk and Huntmaster are both cards that can potentially require two removal spells. He's got two Garrick Relentless in the main deck that can uh, supply a stream of creatures, and another two uh, Garrick Primal Hunter in the sideboard that I'm, I'm sure we'll see come in. Yeah, when it comes to his sideboard, I think Eric has a lot of options. Garrick Primal Hunter, Angel of Serenity because he's a Cavern of Souls deck, Zealous Conscripts to steal one of those uh, Planeswalkers, um, Triumph of Ferocity times one. Awesome card. I am a huge fan of one Triumph of Ferocity. Way back, maybe about four months ago, I was playing Mono Green Aggro for a bit online. Not too much success. Had four Triumph of Ferocity. Was really impressed with the card. But the more I played it, I was like, you know, four is too many. I keep on flooding on my Triumph of Ferocities. Let's go to three. Okay, that's too many. I keep flooding on Triumph of Ferocities. Let's go to two. Okay, I've got two Triumph of Ferocities in my, in my deck. Whenever I draw the second one, it's really not great. Let's go to one. And I've seen one Triumph of Ferocity in the sideboard now of a lot of players who I think have made the same decision. I know talking with Brian Kibler at the uh, Los Angeles Star City Games Invitational, he had something very similar to say about Triumph of Ferocity. So I really like that Eric is down to exactly one, which I think is probably the correct number if you're going to run that card in the sideboard. Yeah, getting it down is good, but you know you don't want to draw more Triumph of Ferocities. You want to draw more creatures to keep it live. You want to draw more things to uh, close the game out with. It's interesting in this case, I think we uh, we could see him bring that Angel of Serenity in, not for uh, the way that it might be more commonly used to clear out a bunch of creatures, but just as a large threat that can put a bunch of Eric's uh, creatures that have died under it, so that if Jack does deal with it, then Eric's hand is refilled with you know as many as uh, three new creatures to cast that, that Jack will have to deal with. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that I think is uh, really important to note those four Bonfire of the Damned, while they might have been very useful leading into this, I think that the Bonfire is very weak uh, in this matchup. That's an easy uh, four cards to take out to fit in all of these cards we've been talking about. But then, um, aside from that, we've been talking about Boros Reckoner as the, de uh, the, the best card um, in Standard. I would be surprised to see Boros Reckoner in the deck in games two and three, um, should we get to a game three. So right there, if he takes those eight cards out, he's got lots of room to work with. And what do you know, there's two Garrick Primal Hunters, one Angel of Serenity, one Zealous Concept, Conscripts, one Triumph of Ferocity, one Cavern of Souls. That would even leave him with two extra cards left to work with. So maybe he'll even keep in a Boros Reckoner or two or a Bonfire or two. And I, I think he's got a really easy sideboard for, uh, for this right now. Yeah, I can see arguments for both of those cards. Uh, Boros Reckoner just being uh, kind of nice on his curve, and uh, Bonfire maybe uh, being a late fireball that works well with his Farseeks and uh, Avacyn's Pilgrim. If the game goes long, it can be a way for him to sort of counter that Sphinx's revelation uh, if he manages to miracle it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think his uh, I think he's got some pretty good options after sideboard. The Planeswalkers are great and we've uh, we've definitely seen them used to good effect against control decks already this week one of the things to think about here these uh, these players are in the semifinals of this star city games open series standard event here in cincinnati but coming up pretty shortly is legacy 
And uh, if you've been to big legacy events in Ohio, you know that Ohio actually has a very large legacy crowd. I'm excited to see what legacy uh, stuff happens here. I'm still thinking about the various legacy Grand Prix that we've uh, had in this area. You know, perhaps one of my most favorite, or one of my favorite moments in a legacy Grand Prix, watching Brad Nelson take junk to a top eight of the Grand Prix here only a few years ago. Yeah, and uh, quite a few legacy GPs in Columbus. My first Grand Prix ever actually was the was a Grand Prix Columbus. It was Legacy, the one that uh, Steve Saden won. So we see Eric starting off here with a rootbound crag, and Jack with a glacial uh, fortress. Yeah, I like that Grand Prix. I, I played White Green Prison. <laughs> I think I played uh, Threshold. Far Seek from Eric Rill. And we'll see. Actually, um, I uh, lost to Mike Bernat in uh, day two of that and went on a complete tilt. And it was the last time I think I've ever tilted because I tilted so bad. I was like, never again. I'm not going to let myself tilt. Yep. Now, Eric Rill names Cavern Minotaur. Ooh. So we will see a Reckoner in this game, uh, game two. Now, as we said, there's only six cards coming in from the sideboard. I don't know if he kept in four Boros Reckoners, but he at least kept in enough to want to name Minotaur. We are probably going to see that Boros Reckoner come down. I don't think he would name Minotaur just to throw Jack off. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Jack does have counter magic, so, so I think we will be seeing those Boros Reckoners. At least one. Now, one of the things that's very interesting is I can actually see Jack Fogel siding out his dissipates because of Cavern of Souls and bringing in negates to fight against cards like Garrick Relentless, Garrick Primal Hunter, and the like. Yeah, they are uh, very important cards in the matchup that, that can't be made uncounterable with Cavern of Souls, and we do see that Boros Reckoner come down. Uh, we see Jack Fogel with a Devour Flesh that he may choose to use now, he may wait. Um, see how he, how he decides to play this one. And, uh, I think I do see a couple of... Nice. Blind yep. obedience. That's awesome. Um, we have from Twitter, and if you're not uh, on Twitter, thought joining in the conversation, you should be. Use hashtag SCGCIN. But Jeremy, that's at Circa, asks, does Jack Fogle look like Jerry T? Well, let's take a look at Jack Fogle and, uh, and see what we think. I don't know. Does he look like Jerry T? And we see that triumph of ferocity come down. I guess he looks a little bit like Jerry T, but uh, not so much. And Thanks to Jeremy at Circa. And uh, Blind Obedience faces off against a Triumph of Ferocity that we were talking about and that Boros Reckoner. I predict we're going to see a dead, yes, a dead Reckoner, including some extortion from the Blind Obedience. Eric Rill will gain three and then have one life drained from him to Jack Fogel. And... Yep, there goes the Boros Reckoner. So we'll see if uh, Eric can add another creature to the board to uh, turn that Triumph of Ferocity on. Uh, looks like uh, he has a Garrick Relentless and uh, what I believe is a Huntmaster of the Fells in hand. Uh, I'm not sure he has a fourth land, though. And we see an uh, alternate art Av Avacyn's Pilgrim coming down. There are so many alternate arts these days, it can be hard to keep track. I mean, we're at the point with the various different promo foils, judge foils, uh, things that are printed for special events. Oh, look at that. Supreme Verdict to take out a single pilgrim. That is the power of Triumph of Ferocity. Yeah, every creature represents uh, extra cards drawn on Eric's turn, so Jack has to answer all of them. And we see a, a couple of dissipates in Jack's hand, and... Uh, Ooh, oh, wow. I don't think that Jack will any longer be able to answer the Triumph of Ferocity unless he actually gets rid of specifically it. He's going to have to use some Oblivion Ring style effect. Um, looking at Jack's list, there are exactly zero Oblivion Ring style effects. So we're going to see Triumph of Ferocity making Eric Rill into the player that gets card advantage. Yeah, this could be a little bit of a backwards game where you see uh, Eric just out carding Jack, even uh, even potentially through those Sphinx's revelations if if uh, he's able to keep creatures on the table, which looks like he will be with that Garrick that's gonna supply him with a stream of those. I 
believe I saw Jack draw an Obsidot, which uh, is interesting in this situation because it, it might be a card he would normally want to uh, blink out to get that life drain, but if he leaves it in play, then on Eric's upkeep, Eric's going to need a creature with five power to actually draw a card off Tri Triumph of Ferocity. Now we see Jack Fogel do a um, main phase, think twice, hunting for land, and uh, does not find it. Eric Rill remembers the Triumph of Ferocity trigger, gets the extra card. I think this is going to be the beginning of the end for Jack Fogel this game. Yeah, as we said, he has to answer all of... Uh, he, he has to answer all of Eric's threats, and Eric drawing two cards a turn is, is not going to help him do that. Eric doesn't even have, does not even have to play anything else, and he can just sit right here with his Triumph of Ferocity and his Garrick, and basically the, uh, the, the card there, Triumph of Ferocity, is picturing exactly what's happening to the Liliana-style player. <laughs> it's just hand on the throat, about to just knock him out. Yep, and we, uh, we do see Jack draw a land, I'm not sure if he has any islands or planes in play. I can't tell if that's an isolated chapel or a godless shrine, so we'll see if that's going to come into play untapped. Jack actually does have two dissipates in hand, so, uh, you know, thinking about countering something that the Cavern of Souls isn't naming or countering those planeswalkers. Yeah. We see a Restoration Angel come down from Eric, and I believe I saw at least one or two more of those in his hand. Now, the Glacial Fortress that... Uh Jack Fogel just laid, came into play, tapped. Sad news for Jack there, really. But, I mean, it is what it is. He's got all of these funky lands, but sometimes it doesn't play out like he would like it to. Yep, and uh, so we see that's going to delay the uh, Obsidot, and I, I think we see a hand of two Dissipates, a Sphinx's Revelation, an Obsidot, and another spell at the back of his hand. The uh, Restoration Angel is going to come down, and Restoration Angel allows Eric to play at the end of Jack's turn, yeah. basically, and... Uh, and not have to commit on his own turn to uh, casting a spell, potentially leaving himself open to a sweeper. So we're going to see a lot of damage coming across here. In for eight. Seven, I should say. Two, four, seven. Yep. That is not two Restoration Angels, that is two Wolves. <laughs> it looks like they're paired up. Yeah, yeah. Although we I... know they're not. Uh, I mean, Garrick Relentless just sitting there being relentless. Yeah, produced uh, three or I believe three wolves so far. Think twice flashed back. I think he's thinking about extorting. I would uh, I would extort. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything uh, else that he can do with that one blue or white. Um, and he does choose to extort. Going up to 10 and uh, dropping Eric to 21. Looking for the Terminus. Not there. Yep, just uh, five lands and a Blind Obedience in play for Jack against uh, Triumph of Ferocity, three Wolf Tokens, Restoration Angel, Garrick Relentless, and four lands for Eric, who, who uh, has a handful of cards, which is true for both players, but uh, Eric has a much more substantial board. can see the pen coming out. This is the simple the symbol in my mind that Jack Fogel is doing math in his head. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm at ten. That's too close. Yeah, he's writing on an imaginary sheet of paper in his mind. Yeah, we see uh, we see some some decent defense in uh, Jack's hand, but a little uh, little light on land. So we'll see how many of those spells he can actually cast before he's overrun by these creatures. Having five, chooses to go with that Obsidot. Drains for two, puts a large creature into play, and at least for now stops the Triumph of Ferocity. Oh, wow. Huh. He's going to choose to flicker it out. I don't know if I like that one bit. Yeah, not not a fan of that. Uh, he had the ability to oh. stop the Triumph of Ferocity. And, I think, and that's death on the table. Yep, I think we see 12 power there. So... Unless Jack has a slaughter pact. If the life totals are correct, that's death on the table. Yep. And Eric thinking about his options. The hmm. uh, player 
was discussing something. Uh, Eric with just a handful of cards. Uh, what looks like two Avacyn's Pilgrims, uh, two Huntmaster, two Boros Reckoners. So he did leave in at least two of those Reckoners. I wouldn't be surprised if he left in all four having named uh, Minotaur with that cavern. Okay, I think what happened there is that we have the life total slightly off, mm. and uh, he lays a Boros Reckoner and then has Garrick hit it in mm. order to uh, finish Jack Fogel off. That is a nice little interaction. <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely think, though, uh, that the Obsidot should have stuck around just hanging out. Um, that would have gained Jack Fogel an additional two effective life and uh, cut off Eric from a single card. Yeah, it, um, you know, it would, would have gained him the two life later, but later was too late, and uh, that two damage to Eric really, uh, Eric being at such a high life total, I don't think that two damage was going to matter. And as you said, it would have turned off Triumph of Ferocity for that turn, so... We'll see what these players have for game three. Uh, looks like Jack may be uh, considering his sideboard. Uh, Eric going over Jack's deck list. Wondering if he wants to make any changes. Uh, looks like he's just shuffling up. And uh, Jack considering uh, his current composition. Uh, I wonder if he may be uh, thinking about those negates after seeing Triumph of Ferocity and Garrick, uh, if he doesn't already have them in his deck. Uh, you know, even though Eric is uh, pretty spell light, the spells he does have are incredibly important in this matchup. So. Yeah, this is true. Now, we saw how much power Garrick Relentless managed to put into play that game. Just. Wolf after wolf after wolf, turning on the Triumph of Ferocity. I mean, Jack Fogel wanted that Triumph of Ferocity to not work out for Eric Rill so badly that he supreme verdicted away a single Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as far as Planeswalkers go, Jack does not have good ways to deal with them. We don't see the uh, typical uh, Detention Sphere or even Oblivion Ring. Um, and I'm, I don't even see uh, Lingering Souls unless I'm missing it. No, there's no Lingering Souls, there's no Detention Sphere, um, there's no Oblivion Ring. And only one Restoration Angel in the main, though he has Restoration Angels in the board. So it's not like he can go, surprise, from the clouds comes an angel to save my, my day. Yeah, he has very few good options against those Planeswalkers, so... I think one of his uh, one of his plans definitely has to be stopping them from uh, resolving in whatever way he can, or they're likely to just take the game over. He isn't uh, that well suited to fight against the constant stream of creatures. I know talking to Jack uh, yesterday, Jack was talking about Restoration Angels in his sideboard as one of uh, the key elements to his uh, success this weekend. Um, he didn't tell me why he only ran one main, but he said that the two extra Restoration Angels were something he was using a lot in order to uh, basically fight a lot of uh, Game 2 fights with creatures, hmm. take care of, I think he was using them largely to take care of things like Geist of Sea Traft, but you know, I'm curious if he's going to bring in these as one of his few ways to fight a Planeswalker. Yeah, we... Uh... We definitely might see that. We saw in uh, round 10, actually, a Geist get uh, ambushed by a Restoration Angel in that way. So a good use for it. Um, having a lot of answers to Geist is always good for control decks. I think we may see those Restoration Angels coming in. Uh, I think Jack understands how big of a problem those Planeswalkers are for him. And uh, Restoration Angel, a decent way to deal with them. It uh, is blocked by other Restoration Angels, but... You know, can't have everything. Right. Now, uh, one of the things to think about this weekend, the number one and number two seeds for this tournament at the end of the Swiss were was Esper Control, mirroring the Pro Tour, where uh, at the Pro Tour, the number one seed, Esper Control, in the hands of Ben Stark. Yep, and we saw uh, both Esper Control decks advancing from the quarterfinals. And we've already seen uh, one fall to Black White Zombies. So we'll see if the other Esper Control player 
can get through to the finals, or if it'll be a Naya on Zombies matchup. I'm actually uh, kind of rooting for Eric Rill here, even though uh, Jack's deck I think is good and he's been playing great magic all weekend. I think it'll just be neat to see a, uh, a Naya deck doing as well as this for, uh, for our event. Jack Fogel with the mulligan. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Jun decks uh, over the past, uh, well, really, uh, Return to Ravnica and since Gatecrash has been released. Now it's becoming more popular, but this would be uh, this would be a big finish for the deck. And I think that matchup would be pretty interesting. Uh, Eric has bigger creatures uh, that are a little less resilient, but still pretty resilient. I think those bonfires would be really big. Very effective in that matchup. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ben Hayes. This is Star City Games Live. We're at Cincinnati, Ohio for the Star City Games Open Series, wrapping up the standard. 679 players, now down to only three. One player waiting to play the winner of these two players for the final match. You see uh, both players shuffling up. match tied at 1-1. We just saw a Garrick Relentless and a Triumph of Ferocity uh, completely take over that second game in the hands of Eric Rill, uh, providing him with a ton of uh, a constant stream of creatures, both from the Garrick and from the extra cards he was drawing, and uh, too much for Jack to overcome. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how this third game goes. Uh, I think it'll be important for Jack to be on the play, get out ahead of those creatures, start his chain of removal spells earlier, uh, start his Sphinx's revelation chains earlier. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a question of whether Jack can get to that point where he is chaining Sphinx's revelations and drawing massive amounts of answers, more Sphinx's revelations, and just gaining an unreasonable amount of life. Now, Eric Rill, this is his uh, highest finish so far in a Star City Games event. He did play at the Invitational in Indianapolis in 2012. But uh, this top four finish here, definitely a good showing for him. Um, and uh, I'm sure he's looking to turn this into the beginning of a Star City Games Open Series run for, you know, invitationals and more. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, he's in a good spot to get some points here, chain this and an invitational together. We see an isolated chapel from Jack Fogel. We see his hand with a blind obedience and a supreme verdict, at least that we've seen, and uh, Stomping Grounds comes into play, untapped, used to cast an Avacyn's Pilgrim, uh, getting Eric off to a quick start. And we see a watery grave drawn by Jack, uh, looks like a couple of lands, and we will see, oh, there's a watery grave, uh, but there's also that, that uh, what appears to be a blind obedience behind the Supreme Verdict, and it does come down. Down it comes. Jack Fogel, this is his best finish in a Star City Games uh, Open Series event. He did get ninth place the last time we were in Cincinnati, just a few short months ago. So Cincinnati's his place. And uh, Far Seat comes down. Uh, Eric just deciding which land to get. And between the Pilgrim, if it stays around, and the Farseek, we uh, could see something pretty big from Eric next turn. And uh, that Farseek grabs a Temple Garden. And passes the turn over to Eric, who draws a Restoration Angel. So, unless he, only, unless he still only has one, uh, we'll probably see that used to good effect. Dissipate, Restoration Angel. I think I saw a Think Twice. I'm not sure about that one, though. Yeah, we see uh, Garrick Primal Hunter <laughs> over on Eric's side, along with a, a Land, a Thrag Tusk, and what looks like a Thundermaw Hellkite. So lots of powerful five drops. We are going to see that Garrick come that down. That won't last. Is he? Oh, he does not have a second blue. That is not a blue source there, so he Jack Fogel is actually just not able to counterspell that. Yep, Godless Shrine, Watery Grave, and Nefalia Drown Yards does not oh, cast Dissipate. Oh boy. This is uh, really backbreaking for Jack. That Devastating. Came down. And if he doesn't have a blue source this turn, we're going to see just another 5-drop come down. And uh, 
And this could get out of hand very quickly, even with just that Garrick. Oh boy. Jack Fogel, I believe that's Isolated Chapel right there, paying two life. Yeah, as good as the mana is after Gate Crash, not perfect. And we see, uh, looks like an Avacyn's Pilgrim drawn, Sacred Foundry coming into play untapped. How about this guy? How does he sound? Oh, Drag Tusk. And, uh, looks like he sounds good. If there's an attack, we. Oh. Draw five, he wow. says. Can I draw five? Oh. Who is the beatdown? Eric Rill. Who is the control? <laughs> Eric Rill. I'm going to tell you this right now. You do not want to be a player sitting down against an opponent who is both the beatdown and the control. Usually that means game over. Yeah, more cards, uh, better board, planeswalker in play. Oh, wow. We, okay, we see that Restoration Angel come down. Uh, we're going to ambush one of those creatures and then take out the Garrick. So. I mean, you know. Jack is fighting back, but I'm going to tell you, I don't like his chances. Yeah, it's going to be very rough for him with Eric uh, now having a handful of cards after already casting so many spells this game. Jack uh, loses one life, but... Jack takes one, and he's down to just three cards and four lands in place, so he's going to need uh, need a lot of help. And his Sphinx is Revelation drawn. If he does, get, uh, if he does develop his mana more, that could could help. Still choking on only one blue source. So we're going to see this Restoration Angel come in and kill the Garrick, I believe. And there it goes. Yep. And Eric Rill flicks the die to the side. Let's Garrick die. And uh, that Thragtus really representing a big problem for Jack. Uh, not a great card to use. Just be using Supreme Verdict against. That 3-3 will come back and still represent a good amount of damage. Some Petal Grove comes down. And we see Eric with just a handful of spells at the ready. In for six. Jack goes to ten. And down comes Thragtus oh, number geez. two. Oh, jeez. It just keeps getting worse for Jack Fogel. And still just one blue for Jack that dissipates sitting in his hand. Four mana tapped. Drown Yard's going to be activated, uh, targeting himself. That puts a Devour Flesh in the graveyard. The Angel sits back on defense. Negate comes too late to stop that Garrick Primal Hunter. The best block that Jack Fogel can put down is blocking one of these Thrag Tusks, falling to four. Yeah, this does not look good for him. His hand, negate, a dissipate he can't cast, a sphinx's revelation he can't cast, and finally a supreme verdict. I think he's gonna pass the turn. Yeah, I mean, casting, yeah, if he casts that supreme verdict and uh, Eric does have a Thundermaw Hellkite, then, then that'll be, uh, yep, just passes the turn. Yeah, it's looking very grim for Jack. Wow! Yeah, Zealous conscripts. Second blue source. My my kingdom for a second blue source. Jack Fogel. All he needed to have this game, I think, be an entirely different one is a single blue source on turn three more than he had. That would have stopped the Garrick Relentless. That would have meant that there wouldn't have been five cards drawn, and that would mean I think he would have won this game. But instead, as good as the mana is, just like you said, it can't.